And everybody remain standing, if you will. Uh, today is uh, not just another Sunday. Uh, today is a special day. Uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, had to, I had to chuckle. I've got friends all over the nation that are excited because the Holy Spirit's going to move in their church today because it's Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, I, just, uh, I just say, you know what? Every day is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Amen. He can move them more than one day a year. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. But being Pentecost Sunday, I, how many just came expecting today? And I know that God has something for you. Amen. 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 You may be seated. What a, what a presence of the Lord. Uh, what an awesome job the worship team did this morning. Amen. Amen. Love it. Amen. Looking forward to see how the Lord will continue to expand and move. Amen. Amen. Grab your Bible with me this morning uh, and turn to 1 John, the first epistle of John, not the gospel of John. 1 John chapter 2. Last week, we began a four-week series on the subject of the anointing. Say that with me, the anointing. And last week was part one, where we talked about the yoke and the anointing. How many have been yoke-free this week? Five of you, praise God. Let me try to, how many have been yoke-free this week? Amen? Amen. Praise God for it. And so last week we talked about the reality that the enemy will attempt to put a yoke of bondage in your life, but that yoke is not uh, undefeatable. Amen? That yoke is destroyed by the anointing. Amen? The Bible says that, that his, re- his burden would be removed off your shoulder and his yoke broken off your neck. And the yoke would be destroyed because of the anointing. And we are a church that believes in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we, we talked about that this week. This week I want to go into part two where I want to teach you on the four dimensions of the anointing. I got a call late last night from Pastor Mark Kuprick, uh, who's all amped up. Uh, he's expecting big things today. And he was sharing some things, uh, and, and uh, man, I know Mercy House is going to have a great day today. And he's talking about when Jesus got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for the church. Somebody say amen. amen. And he said, what are you preaching on? And I said, I'm going to be talking about the four dimensions of the anointing. And he said, what? And he goes, what is it? So I gave him a little preview, and he got, he got a little excitable, as he tends to do. Uh, but we want to... Understand, there's more to it than just saying the anointing. The anointing is is has a broader spectrum than just simply the anointing. There are actually four dimensions of the anointing uh, that we want to discover and understand. That it doesn't matter which of these dimensions you begin to walk in. Understand that God has desired for you to learn how to operate under the anointing. The anointing is not just for the preacher. The anointing isn't just for the worship team. The anointing is for every believer. Say that with me. Every believer. Amen. And so let's, let's dive into it. Look at 1 John 2 and verse 20, just in case any of you would doubt that God would give you the anointing. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2. John talking to the church He's not talking to pastors, he's talking to the church. And to the church, he says these words, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now, that does not mean you are a know-it-all, but because of the anointing, you have the ability to have knowledge that you cannot attain on your own, is what he's saying. But I want to focus on the first line, but you have have an anointing from the Holy One. It is not your anointing, it is His anointing. I'm going to say that again. It is not your anointing, it is His anointing that has come on you. Last week, we talked about the anointing of His Spirit, that it removes burdens, it destroys yokes of bondage, but beyond that, the anointing is tangible. There's substance to it. You can touch it, you can feel it. But finally, the anointing, if it's, tr- if it's tangible, it's also transferable. That is why the anointing can be on me, and I touch you, and what happens? 
You feel it, right? Because anything you can feel can be transferred, okay? The anointing is transferable. But now let's go a step deeper and talk about what the four dimensions of the anointing are. And the parts of today I'm going to be teaching, but don't get mad at me if it just takes over, okay? Luke chapter 10 and verse 34 gives us the first dimension of the anointing, which is referred to as the leper's anointing. The leper's anointing. Luke chapter 10 and verse 34, the Bible says, And this man went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Underline that statement. Pouring in oil and wine. Then he set him on his own donkey and brought him to the inn and took care of him. Somebody might be sitting there thinking, but pastor, you said that was the leper's anointing. That sounds like the Samaritan's anointing. Uh, that, is the fr- that is the story we're taken from, but it's called the leper's anointing. You're going to understand it in just a moment. The Bible says that there is an anointing referred to as the leper's anointing that comes from the Greek. The Greek word is S-U-K. It is pronounced suk. Okay, this is not the suck anointing. This is the suk anointing. Watch this, and it means to pour out. So when the Good Samaritan found this man beaten and left to die on the road, the Bible says that he found him and he poured in the oil and the wine. That is the leper's anointing. It is the anointing that comes, watch this, that is poured out on you for a specific moment. It is not, the leper's anointing is not the anointing that stays on you. It is the anointing that is poured out on you because somebody needs something. Amen. We find this when Jesus encountered the leper because the sook anointing, watch this, is for the purpose of cleansing and healing. For cleansing and healing. It is that moment it is the moment where the presence of God comes on somebody and suddenly they are aware of their need to get saved. It's that anointing. It's the anointing that will get poured out on somebody. Have you seen it? You've actually seen it happen. You just don't know what it is. In that moment where somebody will be in the altar and suddenly when the anointing gets on them, when the anointing is poured out on them, now they understand their need to be free from something they've been bound with. It's for a moment. It's the anointing that gets poured out, that makes a difference in somebody's life because, watch this, it's the anointing that comes when a need is present. That's the leper's anointing. It does not linger on you. It does not stay on you. It's for a moment. This is called a single portion anointing. A single portion anointing. Now, the good news about the sook anointing is that it will come over and over and over and over and the and but you need to understand this anointing is not about you this anointing is about somebody that is lined up to be ministered to and you're available to receive the anointing this is not the anointing you receive for yourself it's the anointing you receive for somebody else so you come in in contact with somebody who's addicted to drugs And it becomes more than, let me pray for you. It becomes an anointing poured out to cleanse them and set them free from their own addiction. It is a singular anointing for a moment. I've felt it in my life, man. I mean, how how many have you been there where you're just like, man, you just stand in front of somebody and all of a sudden something surges, something gets down on you. So it's not, there's there's anointings that rise within you, then there's anointings that come on you, and that's what, it's the anointing that gets on top of you. It gets poured out. And like the Good Samaritan poured out oil and wine into the wounds, God will pour out the anointing on somebody because somebody's got a wound. And God just needs somebody available to say, I receive this anointing for this moment because God is doing something in their life. Amen? When you understand you can be a recipient of the leper's anointing, you will shift from, well, if I can just get them to church, 
then I know Pastor Tim will lay hands on them and they'll get delivered. And it becomes, if I can just get the anointing on myself, I can lay hands on them and they'll be delivered because it's for a moment. Amen? Number two, the second dimension of the anointing is called the priestly anointing. Now, this is a little bit different now. In Exodus chapter 29, verses 4 through 7, we see this in action. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons, the priest, to the door of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. You shall take the garments and clothe Aaron with the tunic and with the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall put the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban. Watch this. Then you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. The word for anointing here, for the priestly anointing, is the Hebrew word, mashach. Say that five times fast. Okay, I didn't think you would. It means, watch this, not only to pour, but to smear. To smear on, to, to wipe on, to, to anoint. When you receive the priestly anointing, it reveals to you giftings, callings, and positions of authority within the kingdom. I'm going to say it again. It is the anointing that reveals to you spiritual gifts, spiritual callings, and spiritual positions within the kingdom of God. This is the anointing that comes on you that, watch this, is not for a moment, but it has to deal with your purpose. It will reveal to you that you are now anointed with certain gifts. How, how, many, how many understands what how many how many can raise your hand saying, I know what gifts the Lord has given me? According to Corinthians, right? I, I know, I know that I am that I've received the gift of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the the, the gift of prophecy. I know I've I've received gifts of healings and working of miracles, or the gift of faith, or the gift of discerning of spirits, or on and on and on and on. You only know that because of the Meshach anointing. It is the anointing that comes on you that reveals there are gifts in you, there's a calling on your life, and you have a specific position within the kingdom of God. This is important for us to understand because so much of the church has shut the back door to this anointing. We have shut the door to the Holy Ghost moving in giftings and callings and positionings within the kingdom. But watch this. It doesn't have anything to do with you, but it lingers on you. It stays on you. This is referred to as a double portion anointing. So this is, watch this. This is important for you to understand. This is not an anointing that comes on you for a moment. This is an anointing that lingers on you because of your purpose. What does it do? It establishes you. It equips you. And it prepares you. I want you to say this with me. It's the anointing that sustains. It is a sustaining anointing that lingers on you my mother received it i'll never forget i was in ninth grade and on sunday we had an outpouring dude when i say outpouring i mean it was all over the building i mean even even the mosquitoes were getting saved you know what i'm saying like it was crazy and it was one of those services where there were more people on the floor than standing or sitting and it was crazy. It, it's what we refer to as a crime scene. I mean, bodies laid out everywhere. It was nuts. Uh, we saw teenagers that night get filled with the Holy Ghost. We saw somebody walk out of a wheelchair that night. This was on a Sunday night. Monday morning, my mother takes me to school. At this time, I was going to a small Christian school that was 100% Baptist in theology and in expression. Uh, it was me and one, my best friend's name was Howard, were the only spirit-filled guys there everybody else and half the students weren't even saved their parents <clears throat> weren't even saved <clears throat> but they couldn't control their kids so they said well let's just put them into christian school see what happens 
So watch this. My direct supervisor in that classroom, uh, born, born and raised Catholic, converted to Baptist. And her and my mother had become close friends. I'm walking in, watch this, after a crazy service, but I'm walking in, it's Monday. I'm not in church mode, y'all hear me? I'm, I'm a ninth grader, I'm not in church mode, I'm in, great, it's Monday, I'm back at school. That's my mode. My mother walks in, for, and I still don't know the reason other than the Holy Spirit told her. She walks in, she's like, I'm going to walk you into school today. I said, why? She said, I don't know, I'm just going to do it. She walks me into school, and there the supervisor, she says, Mrs. Marr, it's so great to see you. Good morning. And my mother said, well, hey, honey. And she just walks over there and gives her a hug, and the woman started to tremble. And it, when she started to tremble, we realized the anointing was still on my mom. It was the priestly anointing. It wasn't the anointing that was for a moment. It was a lingering gift anointing that was on her and it transferred onto that woman and she never felt that a day in her life she went whoa what was that and my mother said oh honey that's just the holy ghost right now everybody in the classroom's like had this dude i mean he a hardcore center i think he sold drugs on the side honestly like a hardcore center he was a senior in high school did not want to be there and his eyes got just to be as big as saucers y'all know what i'm saying like he was like dude and we were and then my mother left my teacher sat down she's like just do whatever she sat down and we're sitting there and i was and i'm laughing i'm like get her get her get her because if she gets drunk in the holy ghost i get an easy day at school y'all know what i'm saying so my mother leaves and this one she goes and this dude he this senior he's like whoo somebody better not mess with tim's mama because i'm telling you something's on that woman after lunch i come back and that and the lady she's like uh uh mr marr would you come to my desk please and i was like i know i didn't do nothing i've been quiet i've done my work and howard goes oh i'm like all right so i walk up to her desk and with tears running down her face she's like i don't know what was on your mama she said but i've not been the same since i hugged her i want to tell you something you can get so tapped into the priestly anointing that you don't even have to lay hands on nobody, but a simple hug. A simple hug will transfer something. If it's tangible, it's transferable. It's not, watch this, because this is what we think about the anointing. Oh, the anointing is transferable. In the, down, no, 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 no. The anointing is transferable. Just like that. The anointing's transferable, amen? And can I tell you, even when you can't touch somebody, you can send somebody a prayer cloth. That's the priestly anointing. It's transferable, and it lingers. It'll stay on something. It'll stay on it. it, and it will. Can I tell you, the anointing will get on anything that'll receive it. It's when in our minds, we start thinking, that's not real, that's not God. That's extremism. That's emotionalism. Let me tell you something. You might have an argument, but I have an experience. And my, experiment, my, experiment, my experience is greater than your argument. So you can tell me about what some dude wrote on New York Times bestseller. I only know what the author of all authors wrote. And he wrote that I have received an anointing from the Holy One. It's the priestly anointing, and it, and it lingers on you. It lingers on you. On the evangelistic field, we had this crazy miracle night. And I remember after the miracle night was over the next day, I was in a convenience store. And I just happened to brush against somebody, not on purpose. It was, it was on accident. And when I walked past them, they felt it. And they went, whoo! I said, are you all right? They're like, you're anointed, aren't you? I didn't feel it. I'm, somebody needs to hear this. You're anointed even when you don't feel the anointing. 
Because don't make the mistake that if I don't feel the goose pumples and if, if I'm not praying in tongues and if, if I'm not feeling Pentecostal, then the anointing's not on me. The anointing will get on you when you understand the anointing isn't about you. Matter of fact, God will anoint you in spite of you. He doesn't anoint you because of you. You can't earn the anointing. You receive the anointing. You can't, you can't pray enough for the anointing. You can't fast enough for the anointing. You can't give enough offerings for the anointing. You can't watch enough TBN for the anointing. Matter of fact, that might do the opposite. That's not what the anointing's about. The anointing is about a moment, and it's about purpose. It equips you. It anoints you. It, it, it prepares you in Jesus' name. Amen? How many want that priestly anointing? Just to let, let it stay on me, Jesus. See, 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 unsaved spouses don't need the next greatest sermon from their saved spouse. What they need is the priestly anointing. Something that lingers and something that transfers. Watch this. It gives you power for your purpose. See, that's the reason a lot of pastors quit the ministry is because they're trying to do their purpose without the power of the anointing. Brother, you cannot pastor if you're not anointed by God to do it. You cannot evangelize if you're not anointed by God to do it. You cannot teach if you're not anointed by God to do it. You cannot do anything in the kingdom without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But once it gets on you, watch this, it will linger. This is called the second or the double portion anointing. It was when Elisha picked up the mantle, he received a double portion. And watch this, it was not just for miracles but it was for the purpose of his calling which was to be a prophet receiving a double portion of elijah's anointing the priestly anointing amen amen number three the third dimension of the anointing is called the kingly anointing say that with me the kingly anointing luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 and verse 18 Jesus said this, uh, quoting from Isaiah chapter 61, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This word anointed because the Lord has anointed me. The word anointed is the Greek word krio, C-H-R-I-O, krio. And it means not to pour out, not to smear, but to rub into, to rub into. Now watch this. The first anointing was the anointing that's poured out for a moment. The second anointing is the anointing that is poured out and smeared in that lingers but does not stay. It lingers but will not stay forever. The kingly anointing is a lasting anointing. It is, watch this, not an anointing that comes on you. The kingly anointing is the anointing you walk in. I'll never forget, Pastor Parsley says something to, to us on the day of our graduation. And he said, if you're going to do what God wants you to do in your ministry, he said, then the very thing that used to knock you on the floor, you're going to have to learn how to walk in it. That is the difference. If you want to go to the next level in God, you have to understand, the very thing that used to overwhelm you has to become your DNA. It becomes a part of who you are. That's the kingly anointing. It's a lasting anointing. It lingers, but watch this. It does not linger. The priestly anointing will linger, and then it begins to dissipate. The kingly anointing stays, lingers, and becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a part of who you are. When I was a kid, I got some bad teaching. When I was a kid, I used to hear this all the time. If you, if you want to be anointed, you got to pray it up. 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 Has somebody tell me one time that if you don't fast and pray for five hours before you preach the gospel, God won't anoint you. 
It was actually said that to me. And I believed it. As a matter of fact, if I couldn't fast and pray for five straight hours before church started, then I would not accept the speaking engagement because I didn't want to do it without the anointing. And then I was in a hotel all by myself one day. And God said to me, he said, who told you you could work up my spirit? I said, say that again. He said, who told you that the more you prayed, the more I would pour out? He said, thereby you have stepped into thinking you can manipulate my spirit on your works. And I began to cry and shake. I immediately did the only thing I knew to do. I called my best friend. His name's Bob. I know that sounds like an alias. His, literally, his name is Bob. I called him up. I said, Bob? He said, oh, I'm glad you called. I said, what's going on? He said, God just spoke to me about the anointing. I said, what? <laughs> what? What? I said, what'd he say? He said, well, first of all, why are you calling? I said, because God just told me something about the anointing. He's like, oh, I feel it. I was like, okay, settle down. What did he tell you? He's like, well, I don't know what he told you, but literally what I heard just this minute is God told me to stop thinking my prayers made me more anointed. I said, say it again. He's like, all right, stop thinking my prayers made. He said, he said, God told me, God told me that he's the one that chooses when and where and how he'll pour out his spirit. And whether I've prayed for 10 hours or prayed for one hour, that that doesn't change God's mind. God said, I'm sovereign, and you cannot control my actions. And I started to do what you can imagine I did. I started to shout. He's like, what's going on? I said, all my life, I thought I had to pray and fast for five hours so that I could be anointed for a service. He said, same. He's like, but what did God say now? God said that he would pour out his spirit whether I was in prayer for one hour or five hours. And that I could not manipulate his hand based on my works. And he was like, sounds familiar. What do you think this means? I said, I was hoping you could tell me. <laughs> and he said, man, the only thing I get out of this, he said, it's just like salvation. He said, when I repented, he said, I did not make myself saved. My repentance did nothing more than to position me to receive the work that was already paid. And so then we started. So right then, right, so then we, we, you have another group where we're like, well, well, then if that doesn't matter, why pray at all? Like, if God's going to anoint me. No, 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 no. It doesn't take my hunger away to pray and fast. It takes the condemnation. It takes the condemnation away if I don't have an opportunity to do that. And watch this. So the kingly anointing is not something I pray up. It's something I walk in. Right? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I can walk into this building on a Friday night, on a Friday night fire, after praying for seven hours that day, and I walk in here in the kingly anointing, and what do we see? Signs, wonders, miracles, and the supernatural. But I, that, but I can also be at Walmart Somewhere between the frozen peas and carrots. Huh? Somewhere between the motor oil and the avocado oil. Are you with me? You can be somewhere, somewhere right in the middle and run into somebody with tears coming down their face that if they don't hear from God now, they're going to take their own life. And then, then you can't say, you know what? Let me walk around Walmart for one hour. No, 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 right there and say, you know what? Let's go to the oil aisle. You don't even need that. You can say, let me take your hand. Let me touch you right now. Let me pray and agree with you right here, right now. It's the kingly anointing. It's not anointing I pray up. It's not anointing I work up. It's the anointing I woke up in. I ate my breakfast in the anointing. I got, I got a shower in the anointing. I got dressed in the anointing. I drove to church in the anointing. It is because it is on me. It is in me. It is a part of my DNA. I don't have to conjure it up. I'm not a psychic. 
I'm not trying to conjure anything up. But what I do is I walk in this anointing. So anywhere, anytime, with any person, there can be a transference of the anointing. Of the anointing. I'll never forget, I I was at a hospital one time. And I just went there to visit a family member. And somebody saw me and they they were like, hey, I got somebody that needs prayer. And if they don't get healed today, they're going to die tomorrow. And there was no part of me that said, I'll be back in five hours. Where are they? Let's do this. Walking in the kingly anointing. The kingly anointing isn't just for well-known preachers. No. The kingly anointing is for whoever will receive from the presence of the Holy Spirit and let it become a part of who you are. It is not a fivefold minister's anointing. It is a whosoever will anointing. And it is, oh man, it's, it's blessed. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I love it. I love it. It's not, watch this. So the leper's anointing is a single portion. The priestly anointing is a double portion. Watch this. The kingly anointing is a portion without measure. It, uh, see, 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 see when, you, when, you, when you get a single portion, what happens when you use the portion? It's depleted, right? So, so what happens if you get a double portion? See, let me, let me make it real plain and real simple for you. Um, I don't like going to those restaurants that give you cute glasses. You know, a, a little six-ounce glass of iced tea. Sister, you're going to have to bring a pitcher because I'm going to be running you like a wild dog refilling my cup, okay? I like going to those restaurants where they bring a 32-ouncer to the table and like, here you go, right? And they don't do that for you. They do that for their staff, right? I like big, wide mouth glasses, right? My, my mother-in-law calls me a camel all the time. She says all the time. She's like, good thing Tim don't drink alcohol. She's like, the way this dude guzzles, he'd be hammered all the time, okay? And I, I mean, I love to drink water, iced tea, Coke, zero, coffee, doesn't matter. I just, I just love it, okay? Now, the thing about it is, I was at a restaurant one time, and, uh, and I was, you know, I tried, to, I, tried to, I tried to do the little slick, cool thing where, you know, or let dad order drinks for the table, right? So uh, uh, me and my boys were going to drink the same thing. So uh, one wasn't there, so me, I think Judah's in the bathroom, me and Josiah are sitting there. Kimberly and Jillian went ahead and ordered, and I, and I said, uh, she's like, yes, sir. And I said, uh, bring us two Coke Zeros. She's like, all right. And she's like, I'll, I'll be back. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. This still confused me to this day. She comes back, lemonade for Jillian, iced tea for Kimberly, and brought me two Coke Zeros. And then looks at Josiah and says, what did you want? <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, at first I was like, that's silly. Then I was thinking, I'll take it. I'll take that because I will drink two before, any, before Kimberly gets half through her tea. I'll already both go yeah. through two. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I got any guzzlers like that? Yeah. And so, and so I'm like, no. I said, once for me, once for my son. And she's like, oh, okay. And I was like, I, thanks. She goes, well, will you drink too? Because I'll just go get your son one. I'm like, you're not going to threaten me with a good time. Absolutely. <laughs> and then I got, and I was sitting there and I was looking at my, my drinks and I, and I heard this, you just got a double portion. But that's the thing about it. The double portion, oh my God. The double portion lasted longer than a single portion. But can I tell you, based on my thirst, the double portion had to get refilled. Oh, what what did Paul say in Ephesians? But understanding what the will of the Lord is, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be being 
filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, there's the thing about it. You can consume the portion of the anointing, but if you don't get refilled with that anointing, the portion will run dry. But what if I told you that there is an anointing called the kingly anointing that is not a single portion, it is not a double portion, it is a cup that does not run dry. It is a portion that does not dissipate. Can you imagine? Can you imagine some of my sweet tea drinkers? Some of my... Some of my Coke Zero, I know I've got a couple of y'all here. My Coke Zero drink. Can you imagine that no matter how much you consumed, it never dissipated? Can I tell you, you can tap into the anointing in such a way that no matter how much it flows through you, it does not weaken, it does not lessen, it does not dissipate, it does not leave. It lingers, it stays. It becomes a part of who you are. I don't know about you, that's the anointing I want to walk in. Yeah, that's the anointing I want to walk in. When I walk into a place and they say, Pastor, will you pray for them? They have cancer. I don't want to have to go pray anything up. I just want to walk in it. I just want to tap into it and lay hands on them and watch the cancer dry up and leave in Jesus' name. I, I, I want that kind of, see, because the kingly anointing is the anointing that manifests through you in a way that you see signs, wonders, miracles, and the supernatural begin to take place without doing anything to pump it up. So there's a lot of folks trying to pump up the anointing, but they're tapping into an empty well, and there's nothing there. If I'm tapping in, I got to know there's something down on the inside of me, and it's called the kingly anointing. And I believe there are some of you here today, some of you have never experienced the anointing other than somebody laying hands on you. I'm talking about the anointing that operates through you. So some of you today are going to receive a leper's anointing. Some of you are going to receive the priestly anointing. Some of you are going to receive the kingly anointing. But there is a fourth dimension. This, I believe, is the most powerful of all anointings. The fourth dimension is referred to as the corporate anointing. Look at Leviticus chapter 26, verses 7 and 8. Leviticus 26, 7 and 8. I want to try to do this quickly I, because the Lord has mandated me to lay hands on every single person who wants the anointing today. And I don't want to rush through that. Listen to this. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 7 and 8. You shall chase your enemies, and they will fall before you by the sword. Watch this. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Something happens in a corporate anointing. Listen to this. The Greek word is, I'll spell it for you, E-T-A-I-R-I-K-I. It is pronounced itariki. Say that, that one's fun to say. That's my favorite. Itariki, right? That sounds like a Greek dish, doesn't it? Yes, I would like uh, some lamb and a side of itariki. That's what it sounds like to me. But listen, what does it mean? It means corporate. It means unified. It means together. Watch this now. It is more powerful than any of the other singular anointings because combined anointings equals combined power. Something happens. I've seen a group of 25 people in a building who only had a single portion anointing, but they were unified. And more was accomplished by combining their single portion than in the same building where you only had one person with a kingly anointing. And it's because of what the Bible says. One of you shall put a thousand to flight. Is that what the Bible says? Help me out, Bible scholar. 
Is that what the Bible says? One of you shall put a thousand to flight. Two of you shall put 10,000 to flight. And you might say, but that, 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 that math don't, don't calculate. Because if one does a thousand, then two should do 2,000. But what we fail to understand is the thousand are driven off by a single portion. The 10,000 are run off because of a corporate portion. It is not the math of addition. It is the math of multiplication. That the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 that where two or three are gathered together in my name, if two of you shall touch and agree as touching any one thing on the earth, it shall be done for them by my Father who was in heaven, right? That's what the Bible says. So it is not, so it is not if, I've got, if I've got Judah here and I've got Josiah here and I'm with them, now I've got the where two or three are gathered, right? So, but now, if I am walking in the kingly anointing, and they are walking in a leper's anointing, I've got the anointing without measure. They've got single portions. It is not my anointing plus theirs. It is my anointing multiplied by theirs. Sit down. So then, what if we tapped into an atmosphere where there was so much unity in this building that we were not adding a hundred anointings. We are then now multiplying my anointing times Meg's anointing times Jimmy's anointing times Bobby's anointing. Come on. Times your anointing, times your anointing, times your anointing, times your anointing, times your anointing. And if we don't weaken ourselves through division, we strengthen ourselves through worship, through prayer, through unity. We become stronger together. Whew. My God, I feel it now. If we can learn, I'm, 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 there's not a lot of pastors that will say this. But if I can ever get you to learn not to rely on my anointing, but to tap into your own, it will multiply so much in this place that there's not a devil in hell that could remain in this building. There's not a disease that can linger. There's not a sickness that can linger. There's not an incurable disease that can linger. Not because Pastor Tim laid hands on me, but because we put our anointings together and we got bonded together in unity, which means I have to leave my ideas and my opinions and my ideologies out there. Matter of fact, no, bring them in. Let's get them to the altar. And let's lay them down at the foot of the cross. And let's begin to walk together without them and see what God will do. It is combined anointings which equals combined power. We're stronger together. And I just made up my mind. I'm telling you right now. I just made up my mind. If nobody else is going to walk in their anointing, I'm going to walk in mine. I'll never forget, and, and I, this is going to encourage somebody. I, I was reading one time in Bible college, I was reading a book that was written based on the life of Smith Wigglesworth. And he was actually speaking to Bible college students in England. And the question became, what if nobody we're ministering to will receive the fire of God? And Smith Rigglesworth replied to the student. He said, then son, stand in the middle of the room and let him watch you burn. I have never before, like I am now, have been distracted I used to be distracted by people who weren't getting what I had received. And I've just decided, Loretta, I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm not going to try to convince anybody. And I'm not going to try to live my life in a way that makes somebody want something. I'm just going to burn. And everybody that wants to get on fire can come and connect and we'll burn together. And I'm just trying to tell you, I'm just trying to tell you, 
There's something powerful about this corporate anointing. Have you ever, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love matches. I still do. But, you know, you know what I love? You know what I love? Are those long stick matches. What are they called? You know, they're, you know, they're in a yellow box. They're about that long with a little, you know what I mean? I use them for my fireplace. I, I love them. Yeah, yeah, fireplace matches. There's a brand, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? Fire starter. Fire starter. Fire starter. Okay, y'all missed it. It's okay. Fire starter. And, and, and you know, I, I like that because uh, it'll, it'll light. It's kind of like that priestly anointing. It'll light and it'll linger and it'll just burn, burn, burn until you run out of stick. But when I was a kid, you know what I loved more than those long stick matches? Is I used to love going. Do you remember back in the day where there was smoking sections in every restaurant? And I remember... I remember one time we asked for non-smoking. They put us in smoking because it was the only table. And in the middle of the table, I'll never forget it. I was about eight years old. In the middle of the table, there was an ashtray. And sitting inside of this clean ashtray, which was amazing to me, they had clean ashtrays. But sitting in it was a book of matches. And we're sitting around. Nobody in our family smoked. And so I was like, does anybody want the matches? They're like, what, 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 what? And I said, I said, Dad, can I take them? He's like, yeah, we're paying enough for the meal. Take the matches. So I took the matches, and I got home. And you remember how you used to have to, like, rip off one little, and you had to be careful because you had that, that long of a handle on that match. And then you would say, and what would you do? You, you would take that book, and then you would invert it, right? You'd flip it inside out, and you'd squeeze the tip of that match, and and it would begin to burn. And I did that for three straight matches, and I was, I was just all like, no, please don't worry. Please don't fret. <laughs> but I, I, would, I would burn it, and I would just go, whoa. Ow. Put it in the ashtray. And then we were inside the restaurant. I did another match. Put it in the ashtray. Now, I'm eight years old doing this by myself, and my parents don't care because I'm not interrupting a conversation. Can I get any parents to shout, I know that's right. <laughs> so the third match, and it began to burn. And I thought, one's cool. <laughs> I wonder what would. <laughs> and can I tell you that whole, I'm telling you. And I remember how many they used to be back in the day. Maybe that was 20 or something like that. But when, I th when that, those 15 or so matches caught, and can I tell you, it got a little bit of an attention. <laughs> Do you know what happened? I put it in that ashtray and it burned. And I was like, cool. Years later, I'm in Bible college learning about the corporate anointing. And my mind went back to the book of matches. By myself. By myself. I can burn. Watch this. By myself, I can ignite something. By myself, I, could, I can set off fireworks. By, by myself, I can, uh, I, I can light newspaper on fire that will then catch the wood on fire and have a beautiful fire in my fireplace. But by myself, by a singular match. Um, but, but then there was a day that I became a collector of books of matches. I want all the kids to forget I'm saying this right now. But I became a collector. I became a collector. And one summer, we went on a little trip and went to this place called South of the Border. And South of the Border is on Interstate 95 between South Carolina and North Carolina. And it is the fireworks capital of the East Coast. Dusty, you're going to like this story. And my father stopped on our way back down south on our way back to Florida, and he said, hey, let's stop at south of the border. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. And my dad, now this is back in the 80s. This is 1987. And my father spent $200 on fireworks in 1987. Oh, greatest family vacation <laughs> in the history of the world. And I, don't, I can't tell you anything about that trip. I can't tell you a single thing that happened that trip, but I remember south of the border. 
And we loaded up the trunk with all these fireworks. My mother begins to panic. What if they go off in the trunk, Ronnie? What are we going to do? <laughs> we get all the way back down to Florida. And then we came up on 4th of July. And in Florida, on 4th of July, in our neighborhood, there were no rules against fireworks. You could set them off in the street, in your, on your, in your driveway. That didn't matter. And my dad found me. Y'all y'all know what those big cat firecrackers are? No. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. So he bought me a package of 3,000 big cat fireworks, firecrackers, you know? They're not, we're not talking about M80s or anything. We're not we're talking, we're talking about cherry bombs. They're little innocent little firecrackers. And, and I remember I, I had, uh, I, I took one out, you know, the red paper package, and I took all the paper off and I just held them out, you know, and they, you know, they, they're just perfect in a row with that little wick that goes up the middle. And I was like, oh, man. And at that time, we had a neighborhood cat. And the cat was in the driveway, so I just lit the wick. And just before it got to where the firecrackers were, I threw it at the cat. And <laughs> bah, 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 and that cat took off. I don't think we ever saw it again. And then I got to thinking, I was 10 years old, and I got to thinking, well, if one of those packages is that cool, what would happen if I set fire to all 3,000 firecrackers. And so I go to my dad. I said, Dad! He's like, what's up? I said, I want to have some fun. He's like, what do you want to do? And I went and I got one of my lunch bags. You know, remember those brown sack lunches? My mom had those bags. And I went and grabbed the bag. And I stuffed 3,000 firecrackers into that one paper bag. And then I took the top, and I did it in like a twist. <coughs> I bring out the house, and I said, Dad, let's have some fun. And he goes, what's in there? I said, firecrackers. He said, that's it? I said, yeah, that's it. And he goes, you want to set the bag on fire? I said, I want to set the bag on fire. He's like, let's do it. My mother goes, I'm not going to participate in this. I'm not taking you to the hospital. This is ridiculous. My father says, oh, Mary, let the boy have some fun. <laughs> How many parents know this conversation? <laughs> Dusty, I bet your parents have had this conversation. So I'm out on the driveway. Somebody says, what does this have to do in the morning? I'm about to show you. And I took a book of matches, lit the book of matches and put it on top of that brown paper bag and let me tell you when fire connects to the flammable that bag burned and it burned quick and i have never heard such noise and I just sat back, I lit it, and I ran. I mean, brother, I ran <laughs> all the way to the other end of the driveway. And that thing just, thought, now about halfway through, how many knows it takes a minute for 3,000 big cat firecrackers to go off? It, it, it takes, so, this is not, this is not, this is not a challenge. <laughs> this is not a, this is not a challenge. And if you do anything, Mason, it's your dad's responsibility, not mine. But listen to me. About halfway through, watch this, fire created a sound. And halfway through the bag burning, all our neighbors came out the house because they had to see what is going on. One more quick story. Y'all have time? I know you're hungry. <laughs> Several years ago, about... 10, 11 years ago, we were in Florida at my sister's house. Now, my sister lives in a nicer neighborhood than we grew up in. My sister lives in not quite an exclusive neighborhood, but, you know, y'all get the picture where they got rules about how the length of your grass. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Beautiful neighborhood. And my dad said to me, it's about 10, 10 years or so ago, he says, 
I saw a fireworks store down by the beach. He goes, you want to go check it out? Oh, I'll drive. <laughs> so we go in. The kid, again, kids were really little. We go in there, and they had a wheel of big cat fireworks. I've seen Dusty sell these things. Okay, <laughs> all we could find was 10,000. And we bought a 10,000 firecracker wheel. And my dad was like, what do you want to do? I said, i tell you what I want to do. I said, I want to unravel the wheel in a straight line and put it right down the middle of her street. <laughs> my dad says, okay, he don't live there. What does he care? <laughs> my sister was like, what could go wrong? <laughs> so we go out there, and, and I'm telling you, it was the length of her yard. I mean, it was ridiculous. And I go out there. Kimberly's out there. The kids are out there. And I'm telling you, if you think 3,000 takes a hot minute to explode, 10,000 takes a few minutes, literally. I lit it, and these weren't, but these weren't the firecrackers. These were M40s. Oh, some of y'all pyromaniacs know what I'm talking about. These are the fat firecrackers that were all connected, and it was like gunshots. No, I'm not talking about a 22. Ping, 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 ping. I'm talking eight gauge. And just for minutes, boof, 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 boof. Okay? We're going out there, and I'm sitting there like, Josiah is going, <laughs> crying, Judah's laughing, Jillian, I don't know, she was uncomfortable. <laughs> A third of the way through them. Now you have to understand, once it's lit, That's it. A third of the way through it, their neighbor across the street comes out. What are you doing out here? I said, firecrackers. And he goes, he's holding his cat. You're scaring my kitty. <laughs> Other folks came out. They thought it was cool. My point is, when, when a single anointing combines and creates a corporate anointing, not only will the fire burn, but there will be those that are going to come. What's that sound I hear? Maybe they'll come because they heard a sound. Maybe they smell a fire, but they'll come. And the real hungry, because I can I tell you, we had one guy come out with his kitty cat, but everybody else that came out came out there with their beverage of choice, laughing, saying, This is cool, man. Matter of fact, when they got off, the neighbor next door said, You got any more? <laughs> can I tell you, if it happens in the natural, how much more will it happen in the spirit? And if you and I would not we would learn to not depend on one man's anointing. But if we would start tapping into our own and put it in unity with our brother and our sister, when you understand there isn't one person anointed on your row, every person's anointed on your row. We just got to tap into it. In Jesus' name. How many want that kind of anointing in this place? Amen. Stand to your feet. Lift your hands. Just begin to pray right now. I believe God's going to touch some of you in a very special way. Father, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you, God, that if you did it then, you'll do it now. In Jesus' name. God, I pray that no matter which dimension it is, that the anointing now would begin to rise up on the, on the inside of each man, every woman, every child in this place. In the name of Jesus. Not by might nor by power. God, it is, it is not because of us. It is the anointing of your spirit. So we receive it right now. Come on, lift your hands. Just begin to say that I receive the anointing. In Jesus' name, I receive 
a fresh touch of the anointing. Not for me, but because somebody I know needs to be set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, stretch out your hands. Just, just begin to receive it right now. Let, let God touch you right now. Let Him touch you right now. Tap into that anointing. Some of you are receiving a single portion. Some of you are receiving a double portion right now. Some of you are receiving a portion without measure. It's time to go to the next level in the anointing. It's time to go deeper in the anointing. It's time to go higher in the anointing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you're hungry for it, I want you to come out from where you are. Come forward. Come to this altar. Let God begin to touch you one by one by one by one. Come and receive. Just let God touch you. Let Him move on you to receive a fresh touch of the anointing. A fresh touch of the anointing. It's not because somebody lays their hands on you. God is pouring it out on you. God is pouring it out on you. God is rubbing it in. God is smearing it in. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come hungry. Come hungry. Come hungry. Receive the anointing. But there it is. Come on, step into it. Step into it. Step into it. A greater anointing, a stronger anointing, stronger anointing, a deeper anointing, a more powerful anointing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, it's, it's, it's getting poured out on some of you right now. You can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel it. It's coming on you. Some of you are going to feel a tingling. That's the anointing. Some of you are going to feel warm. That's the anointing. You're going to feel like a heat, a heat sensation going through your body. That's the anointing. It's getting poured out even right now, right now, right now, right now. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Shh. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, say it with me. I receive a fresh touch of the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. In my life, I receive the single portion, the double portion, and a portion without measure. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on that's it it's getting poured out 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 